everybody, we are back yet again. Uh, this time we're going to look at the dynamic panel regression model uh, in Stata. And as always, the disclaimer, there's way more to the story uh, than we're going to talk about here. Uh, so our focus, of course, is the mechanics, right? How to get the job done in Stata. So let's just take a quick look at the, the underlying story here. So uh, first off, what do we mean by a dynamic panel model? Uh, well, first off, when we're talking about panel, right, we've got our YIT, XIT, so it's observations by entity, right, across multiple time periods. Right? Uh, so if we have a Y as a function of X, let's bring up my, my little pen here. Right? There's your normal story, and we know the issue, right? We have a composite error, so the random component of uh, variation in our y variable comes from the so-called idiosyncratic error that varies by period and by time, then there's also very likely going to be that time invariant error, right? So when we're using a fixed effects versus random effects model, right, uh, we're thinking about whether or not that AI term is correlated with our, our right-hand side variables, right, our XIT. So, what makes this a dynamic panel, of course, is that we've added in this lagged dependent variable. So our yi t minus one. And uh, of course, the motivation for doing so should be clear, right? So we're taking advantage of that time series dimension in our panel data. So our ar1 coefficient, this delta coefficient, right? That can be deemed as representing our persistence, right? how long is the impact of a change in x going to last uh, in future values of y and oftentimes in terms of uh, prediction right the best predictor of an outcome today is its outcome yesterday right? uh, and of course once we can open that door for dynamics and time series uh, elements well we might want to consider uh, including lagged values of our exogenous factors, our x variables as well. And again, this opens up a lot of opportunities. So we can think about the, the mathematics of recursive substitution from pure time series. Well, that's going to be applied here as well. Testing for things like Granger causality, right? Estimating cumulative impacts of an x on y, uh, that so-called long run propensity. That's all back on the table here as well. So that's all the good news. Of course, it's econometrics, right? It can't all be good news. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, it's going to be the endogeneity problem, right? So let's think about once we've dealt with that AI, kind of our standard options, either the fixed effects or a first difference, right? Again, the good news, our error term is now completely constructed out of the idiosyncratic component, either the demeaned version here in the fixed effects or the, the difference version down here. So any endogeneity bias due to that AI, we took care of that. The problem is that our idiosyncratic error here, while likely not correlated, well, I should say, hopefully not correlated with our X, that's another issue, uh, will be correlated with our newly constructed demeaned or differenced version of Y. Right, so what's happening here? So by subtracting off the mean value of the idiosyncratic error, right, we're introducing this correlation. So the average value of the error is going to be correlated with the average value of y. Right? Because any one error term right, is going to affect that period's, that individual's level of, of y, and it's going to be associated. Right? So we're going to have a correlation here, thus bias in our delta coefficient. And it's even more direct in the first difference, right? So the difference to idiosyncratic error, uit minus uit minus 1, well, uit minus 1 in the data generating process, right, directly affects the y in that time period, the yit minus 1. So clearly there's going to be a correlation between our difference error and our difference lagged dependent variable, that ar1. So even when we account for the AI term appropriately, we're still going to get bias in those coefficient estimates. Right? So what do we do about it? Well, we don't have to think too hard, right? 
how do we deal with a correlation in the error term, we need to identify an appropriate instrumental variable strategy. And there are a couple options here. We'll look at one of them uh, in this video, uh, specific to this dynamic panel case. So dating all the way back to 1981, uh, there's a technique introduced by Anderson and Shao in two different uh, articles that they wrote. Uh, you can read them, they're really great articles, uh, or you can just, you can just trust me, uh, that this is going to work out. So what is, the, uh, what is the, the suggestion that they have here? Well, first, we use the first difference transformation. Again, we can motivate that, getting rid of that AI term. Uh, then for the IV component, what we can do is just reach back one more period, right? Where the delta yi t minus 2 will instrument for delta yi t minus 1. Right? And the important thing is we've broken the correlation with the error term, right? So a given error term is going to be ui t minus ui t minus 1. So we got a t and a t minus 1, and that's not going to be correlated with the outcome at t minus 2 or t minus 3, right? There's no overlapping time periods to cause us that endogeneity bias. So all we have to do mechanically here is apply two things simultaneously, a difference operation and an IV operation. So let's take a look at doing that. So let's bring up a nice, fresh window of Stata and we'll use kind of our, our go-to uh, example panel data set, but you should be able to expand this to whatever scenario you find yourself in. Um, so we'll use that uh, command web use and we'll call in the example data set PSID extract, right? So this is all provided for us by the good people at Stata. And we have now a panel data set of individual level kind of labor force uh, participation and demographic variables and we can do a real simple panel um, wage determination model right? we've seen this this before uh, and as always we might want to make sure that we have declared our data set as panel in nature so you can use the ts set or the xt set commands uh, and the individual identifier the i variable is id t is our time variable here so let's think about kind of an underlying regression of the log wage as a function of number of weeks work. So again, kind of the labor supply. So if you see this regression estimated, you should be able to give me uh, a couple different reasons why this is going to be, be problematic, right? And A number one, we have panel data and we're not accounting for the the AI correlation. So we would need to use either a random effects or a fixed effects. So we know we're in trouble right away. Then we can think about, well, do we want to include that dynamic aspect, right? So if we bring our, our regression command back up and we add in the first lag, so L dot L wage, so the lag of the log of wage, I know, but it works what we can do is add one more element to what's going wrong here, right? So we're not accounting for the AI, and we're also not accounting for correlation between the idiosyncratic error and our uh, dynamic lagged dependent variable. Right? So let's account for both of those things, right? So in terms of doing this as a differenced model, we have, uh, we have a couple options, right? We can use the built-in difference operator, and once we've declared our data as, as panel, it'll account for that correctly. But it's, it's worth just, just a minute of our time just to make sure that that's true. Let's generate a difference variable. So let's generate, call it DL wage, right? Equal to D dot L wage. So that's the difference in log wage. And let's go ahead and call up, right? Let's browse by identifier by time and by log wage and our new differenced log wage just to make sure that this is going to be working. So if we have 
individual number one, right there, they appear in all seven years of our data. So we have seven observations of, uh, of their log wage. And so notice that the difference, right, for observation two is going to be between one and two. So there's the difference. So a missing observation here. It just so happens they have no change here. So it's not missing, but a zero change. This is where we want to make sure we're on the right track. So once we transition from individual one to individual two, right, and we the time period starts over, right, from seven now down to period one for individual two, well, there's our missing observation. And the change from one to two, period one to two for individual two is denoted here. So we're going to have one missing observation for every individual. That's exactly what we want. Right? So if we call up that uh, difference operator, it's going to give us that panel difference. In, right? So the first kind of change we would want to make, we would run our regression now as the difference, so d dot log wage, as a function of the difference in weeks worked. And then we have the lag, so l dot difference d dot log wage. And that wage, again, has already been defined for us. So the good news here, so running this as a first difference, equivalent to a, you know, a fixed effects in the context of eliminating correlation with the AI, eliminating the time invariant AI altogether. But what we haven't done is accounted for the dynamic panel endogeneity. So the Anderson Shao adjustment would say, let's go and run this as an IV. So IV reg or IV regress. And then in parentheses here, we're going to set the AR1 term and instrument it with the second lag or the AR2. So L2 dot D dot log wage, L wage. Whew. So there we have it. So we see our AR1, our lag dependent variable. Here's the estimated coefficient. That would be the delta hat from the way I wrote the equation previously. Almost significant at 10%, but not quite. And then we could go ahead and interpret the rest of our coefficients appropriately. There's another option to get the same result uh, in Stata, and we've seen this before in a previous video, uh, that we have the panel-specific instrumental variable option. So we could run this as an XTIV regress that has a built-in difference operator option, just like you can do uh, XT reg y x1 x2 comma fe comma re but with XT IV regress you could do comma fd for first difference so we don't need to do all the d dots uh, in uh, specifying the equation so it's just going to be log wage weeks and then l dot l wage but we do need to specify our instrument right so it's still going to be l2 dot l wage in our instrument parentheses there and then at the end comma fd and let's see this should give us uh, identical results and there we have it so our ar1 coefficient on the first difference after iv is the same as what we did here when we differenced by hand so it's a matter of, of preference. Obviously, the more complicated your specification is, but the more benefit you'll get from just using the XTIV reg and let Stata do the differencing for us. Uh, the other, of course, uh, benefit is that it gives you your multiple dimensions of, of goodness of fit here. It gives you your panel-specific output. But as far as estimating the coefficients, the results are going to be identical. All right. So there's another option we could use here. Uh, the so-called Ariano bond estimator uh, that's going to take another tack, a, a generally more efficient approach at the panel IV for a dynamic uh, regression. We'll take a look at that some other time. Uh, as always, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next time.